Hi, this is Nathan Pierce from F5 Network's Programmability and Orchestration Team. So this is episode two in the iWorkflow 201 series. The 101 series was using iWorkflow via the GUI. The 201 series is communicating with iWorkflow via the REST API. Before we get going with this particular episode, uh, just a recap of our environment. Uh, I have made one change. I've upgraded to Big IP 12.1. I was lagging a little behind back on 11.6. Um, that is the only real change to this environment. I just upgraded my Big IP. Um, before we go into this exercise of deploying and layer four to seven app services template, we're actually going to just go through a couple of little cheats with using Postman. Um, these little environment variables that you can set will save you a lot of time, so I'm just going to show you that feature of Postman. Again, you don't have to use Postman with iWorkflow. I'm just using this because I don't know what scripting languages you might prefer, so you can take any of the examples I'm using here and do whatever you like with those. Uh, integrate them into your orchestration system, run them from Python or Perl scripts or, or Node, whatever you prefer, any JavaScript. Um, so first, before we run this command, um, this exercise we're going to use to show how Postman can be leveraged better, it merely switches from using basic authentication to using token-based authentication. Now, this is handy because once you have a token, you no longer require to send your username and password back and forth across the network. So it adds a bit of security, and once you've established that token, you can set the timeout of it, and continue sending commands, updating, patching, posting, uh, etc. from then on. So, so these little tricks can save you a bit of time and make things a bit more secure. So the first thing we're going to talk about is these environment variables. So in, I, uh, in, in Postman, you can manage your environments. And here's one I just created before I hit the add button. Um, so I'm going to go in here and actually look at this environment. And I've set this key of iWorkflow management IP, and I've given it a value of 10.128.1.130, which is, as you saw a moment ago, the IP address of my iWorkflow in natelab.local. So by saving that information, I can now select to use iWorkflow Lab as my environment. The default is no environment. By telling it I then can use this environment variable inspector button and you'll see iWorkflow management IP 10.128.1.130. So now anytime this environment variable, which you can see in the post, is presented, it will substitute with the value provided on the right. So in this exercise, we have three transactions within the collection. Um, so not a huge benefit when you start to expand those workflows out to have several more, um, even 10, 15, that can actually save a lot of time by substituting that. It also means I can share my Postman collections and you can use them by just updating your environment variables. So I'm going to start posting these on GitHub uh, for everybody to consume. So let's move ahead with this particular transaction. You see it's a post, so I'm sending something to my iWorkflow and I'm sending it to this URI, which you can learn more more about on Dev Central. Um, you'll notice no auth headers. It merely says that it's got a JSON payload in the body. And that JSON payload is actually just username admin, password admin, my environment's pretty basic, and the provider, which is Tmos, the underlying operating system. So it's going to send these as a post request to that URI. I'm going to hit send now. So you can see that it was successful. That is because it picked out my environment variable for the IP address, and it knew where to send it. So here's the response that we have. We have this token that has come back. Now you notice some other properties about this token. It was a local provider. I wasn't using external authentication. Also, um, it's just confirming the source address that this came from. We do have auditing logging that we take on the iWorkflow so that it um, can be audited. But also we have a timeout, which is pretty low, only 1,200 seconds. We're going to do something about that in a minute. Step one, though, is we're just going to take a copy of this token because we're going to use this from now on for further transactions. And again, as I pointed out before, we're going to use these environment variables. So the next step, instead of put, we're actually using a patch. We're making uh, it's a different HTTP method or HTTP verb, as some people prefer to say. And we're actually going to just patch the properties of that auth token by changing this timeout to the maximum of 36,000 seconds. So we have the management 
IP in here, but we also have this new variable I'm going to create called iWorkflow1 underscore auth underscore token. And that means any further transactions now, I just have to put that variable in and whatever my new token is, it will just get substituted for each time I run this. So I could come back to this in several weeks. All I have to do is run the first command to update my token and all of these commands will use that token from then on. So it's a speedy shortcut of getting around things. So the first thing we're going to do is just going to create this variable, iWorkflow1 underscore auth token. So we're going to manage environments, go into this one. We're going to paste the token that we copied out of that other transaction. Hit update, go. And now you'll notice when we inspect the environment, we have this auth token sitting here. So now we can go in and increase the time adder. So it's going to send to the IP address and to the token at the end of this URI that refers to the tokens. It's going to send there's our token, so this is the header that is expected by the iWorkflow platform when it's receiving a token. The body is merely to patch this timeout 3600. So let's execute that now. You'll notice I again have no auth because it's using the token for this transaction. We'll hit send and there we go. We've got back the information about the token that we were sending to. And then we've got the new timeout. So this is a great introduction to just basic communications with your iWorkflow platform, but also to start using these environment variables to make life much easier um, in, these, in this communication. So let's just test that that all worked with a transaction. We're going to ask it to show the list of tenants that are on this particular device. So it's going to use the IP address here. It's going to use the token inside of the header and then it's going to get us that list. So we just have to hit send. We have our environment variables. And here we go, a list of tenants, my tenant one. And just to confirm, we'll go to the GUI. We're gonna log in as admin, admin. And then we go to tenants. And there it is, my tenant one. So that's the system we're talking to. Now, there's a few things in there. I don't expect you to remember the names of all these environment variables. What I'm gonna quickly do now is I'm just gonna show you how simple it is to share them. I'm gonna go into here and I'm going to destroy my environment. I'm gonna delete my environment variables. They are now gone. There is no environment. And now I'm also gonna come over here and I'm going to destroy my collection. So again, there's this Postman one, which is a default that just comes with Postman. So now I've lost all of this information. I'm gonna show you how quickly you can get on board with these workflows. I'm gonna import a couple of things. So the first thing I'll import, and I've started sharing these on GitHub. Let's go, this is my GitHub account. It's N Pierce, that's my name, Nathan Pierce. Um, and then I have this underneath this repository for F5 iWorkflow REST commands. So down here, I'm gonna to go to the Postman environment first. So this is my environment, it's actually just an exported JSON. If I click raw now, I get the raw file. Now I'm gonna provide these links in the article so you don't have to memorize these, but let's go back to Postman, import from link, go. So now, I workflow lab, this is the environment that was posted. It has no token because we've not run it yet, but there you go. That's how quick you can share environments. And this will get more detailed over time. It only has two in there, but once we start adding extra exercises, I'll start filling this out with more information. So the th second thing that we want to import is actually a Postman collection. So if we go back to where we were in our list, so back under the, this repository and we see the collection for auth tokens is right here. I click on that one. This is actually the JSON formatted context, content that is used by Postman. But if I go to raw, copy that link, which will be in this article for you, paste that link. There we have it, you now have that collection back. So you don't need to learn how to do all these things. I'll be sharing these throughout the articles. 
One extra little bonus I've added in that wasn't in the example I run before, when I share these Postman collections, I've added in these scripts. So before we had to copy and paste things into our environment variables, you'll see at the moment there's not much in here. What this script does is it collects the payload, it makes a log to just say that it worked, and then actually it sets the environment variable for you. So I'm going to show you this quickly. I'm going to send that post. There's the token, but I haven't copied and pasted it. It's automatically thrown it in. So there's a bonus for you when you um, consume these ones. I've, I've written these little scripts. It's just JavaScript that I paste into the back of the collection. Saves you copying and pasting. Um, again, when we increase the token, this one's got a test. It actually just logs whether there was a 200 OK. Um, same as before, I'm going to hit send. And you'll notice down here in the test, this is the responses I my script told it, it said, I want to report back if it was a 200 OK, report 200 OK, and timeout that was successful, it said that it's passed that test and the timeout did get set. So I'm just trying to make your lives a little bit easier for you there when you run these things. Um, anyway, that's the end of the quick intro. So using Postman, it's far easier with these environment variables. I'm going to share links to those files for you in the article though, so that you can start consuming uh, these things much faster. Thank you for listening. This has been Nathan Pierce from F5's programmability and orchestration team.